Do you have a passion for wine and now you want to take your wine education to the next level or are you thinking about potentially pursuing a career in the wine industry? Today I want to share with you the five things I share with aspiring wine students no matter what level they are it becomes relevant at every stage of your wine education journey. So if you have considered taking a wine course whether for personal interest or you're looking to potentially seek an accreditation within the wine industry such as a sommelier or the Wines and Spirit Education Trust Diploma. If wine education is on your horizon, today are the five things that I share with all inspired wine students. So if you're ready, let's get started. Before we dive into today's topic, let me welcome you all to the Wine Shop Talk podcast. You may be listening to this in the audio format or on YouTube as a video. For those of you who are new here, my name is Erin Rosar. I'm a professional sommelier with almost 20 years experience, and it is my privilege and my passion to make learning about wine fun, easy, and also practical, meaning that I want to empower you and build your confidence so that you're comfortable making wine choices and decisions for not just fancy events, but everyday meals where you're making memories with family and friends. Let me first say that if you are considering continuing on in your wine education, that is amazing. It is a wondrous, vast topic and it is going to keep you busy for a lifetime. But if you are looking to formalize this education and maybe pursue more of a professional designation, then there's just a few things to keep in mind as you're going on your journey. And my first tip is that it's just not about tasting wine. And As a sommelier, not only do I look at tasting wines, I look at beers and spirits. And so it's not just about wine. And it, when we do assess the wines and tasting is definitely a component of it, there's so much more of it. And so the first part is, is that while tasting wine, beer and spirits is going to be part of your learning journey, it is only a fraction of what you're going to need to know to be of service, which is my point number two. And that is being an accredited Somali or a wine professional or a wine enthusiast at that point, if you are building your knowledge, which means you're going to share it, much like if you know how to cook and you enjoy sharing your recipes with family and friends, when you are in the wine industry in whatever capacity you are, whether it's as an enthusiast or an accredited professional, is that you are being of service. And it's always good to remember that your job, your role is to do no harm. As you grow in your knowledge base, you want to make sure that you're helping everybody come into the story of wine. It is a wondrous, amazing story, wines, beers, spirits, and to share that information. But always remember that not everybody is coming from the same baseline as you. And so what you may like, or the more you know about something, we have to be moderate in how our enthusiasm for the information we're learning. We don't ever want want to make that information seem overwhelming or snobby for a lack of a better word. And I definitely feel in the wine industry, sometimes somebody's experience with someone who they take or they assume as being snobby is really just somebody really passionate and unfortunately just isn't resonating well with how they're sharing that information. So as you grow in your knowledge, remember that the goal is to invite people into the story. We want people to enjoy different things. We want to open up discussions. Remember that wine has been with people for over 6,000 years. It has been with every good time, bad time, all the times in between. And what makes wine so fascinating and wonderful is it's a personal experience. So how I may taste something or describe something is going to be different from somebody else. So remember that as a person who is enthusiast about wine and wants to share that knowledge with others, that you are of service and it is your role to help play a matchmaker and maybe help to explain to somebody, but it's never to make anybody feel that their choice or their favorite or their selection is in any way, shape or form less than, or that they should not be proud of what they feel is one of their favorite wine styles. So remember that a role in the wine industry is one of service and being of help to other people and just sharing the knowledge. You become an ambassador. Tip number three is maps. I hope you like maps because the wine industry, beers, spirits, it's all about maps. And the more maps that you can get your hands on in regards to wine regions, countries, the world, 
latitude, longitude, all of this is going to become so important to you because maps are our cornerstone, our keystone of how we understand why some wines are different than others. Where does the sun hit? The maps are also going to show us when we get into three-dimensional maps and we start to see the hills and the valleys and all of these different nuances that come together. But if you don't like maps, I'm just sharing that you're going to need to become a fan because maps become a huge part of your studies and of your understanding of the differences and of the expression that's happening in the glass. So maps, maps, maps. If you are going to study wine in any shape or form, maps are going to become your best friend to the part that you're probably going to start drawing them out. Definitely something that I share with students as we get up in their different levels of training is to to draw out maps and I usually recommend just picking up a box of moving paper. You get that really large paper in a box. It's like a thin newsprint and you can just draw on them and you draw light like big big pieces of maps and you're going to have them anywhere. You can put them in your house whether it's map of Italy, map of Germany, map of California. Maps are such a huge part of learning about wines, beers, and spirits. Which segues nicely into my point number four, which is every subject that maybe you liked or didn't like during high school all comes together in a glass of wine, beer, or spirits. And what does this mean? This means that in every single glass, we're going to have history, geography, chemistry, math, such as trigonometry, which we actually can use in vineyards and how we use shading and angles. So every high school subject that you thought, this is a waste of time, I don't know why I'm learning it, all of a sudden starts to make sense in a glass of wine. So all of those studies that maybe have been a while ago for you, they're going to come back. And the more you learn about wine, the more you're going to start to pull from that base level information that you learned in high school and university and continued on. But learning about wine is a multifaceted, multi-layered conversation. And what is so wonderful about that, because as you continue to learn about wine, you may find you get to a point where you just can't take in any more chemistry. You can't take any more science about how the different compounds and the interactions in the glass of wine. So you can shift your studies a little bit and go more into the history or the ge geography or topography of what's impacting from that side of things. So while well, wine is a multifaceted, it allows you as a student to take an area of interest and focus in on it. And then you start to layer in all that information till it starts to make sense. And so just know that wine is literally going to make high school seem like, oh my goodness, now this has a place in my life of where I can use it. And my fifth tip for aspiring wine students is that you're never going to know it all. So if you're going into this thinking that I'm going to know this, I'm going to have a base, know that wine is ever changing and beers and spirits. We are learning new things. We are trying new things. We are going back to old ways and some things as well. And so wine is a lifelong journey or any studies in regards to wines, beers and spirits. So if you are studying for an exam, for example, then of course you are going to study what you need to know to be able to have that accreditation, to have that base knowledge, but you are continually going to be evolving your information, your palate and how you taste things. Your palate will continue to evolve as you try different foods and different wines and beers and spirits. You'll have more of a reference point and the whole idea of all of this information that you are gathering, that you're using your senses, you're going to need to look at things, smell things, taste this, all of these experiences come together. And again, this goes back to point number two, which was to be of service. You are learning so that you can share experiences with other people and you can become a matchmaker between all of the incredible winemakers and producers around the world and the person at the table who's looking to enjoy a flavor or a wine style or beer or spirit from around the world. So you are the glue in the middle. And that is such a fascinating, wonderful place to be. And on that note, as you are that person in the middle, please know that you're going to spend a lot of time sort of making that connection, putting the person and the product together 
and then watching or waiting for the reaction when the person does try that. So I will always kind of joke that as a sommelier, if you are working in a classical role, that if you are in a restaurant or a hotel or some way that you're actually present while the person is trying that pairing or suggestion in real time in front of you, there's a moment where we all hold our breath and we're waiting for that smile or sort of that acknowledgement from the customer's face when they have tried something and you can see that light up in their eyes that this has been magic. It was an experience they were not ready for or maybe expecting and that has brought such pleasure and that is the moment much like that perfect golf swing where you hear that noise of the golf ball hitting the club perfectly and you're like yes and so that smile on one of our customers or clients face when they have tried something that has surprised them and enlightened their palate that is the moment that we are all working for. And obviously now with social media, we're seeing those responses. Our customers and clients are going to share things that they have loved or products that they have found through us. And that is the moment we live for. We are the concierge between, again, the producers and the person looking to enjoy. And we're just using all of our information and our experience tasting things to bring that experience together for the person that we're working with at that moment. So let's recap the five things that I tell every student. And again, this is for if you're just doing the, if you're looking to take a wine course maybe for the first time, if you are going forward in your wine education and looking for accreditation, all of these five points resonate for all levels of wine education. The first one is that it's not just about tasting. There is book study involved, and the more book stuff you learn, the better taster you're going to become. So tasting is an important part of being a sommelier or a wine professional, but we need to do the book studies to be able to support the tasting. The second part was remember you are of service. You are a role of a matchmaker in between the producers of the world and and the person looking to enjoy the product. You are the person in the middle and it is our job to bring people into the story and help them feel comfortable trying new things and exploring the different flavors that the world has to offer. Number three was maps. We love maps, we need maps, and they become part of our world. If you um, have wine enthusiast friends, definitely they're going to have maps somewhere on their desk or their office. It becomes sort of second nature. And if you don't like maps, I highly recommend you find a new appreciation for them because they are going to become your best friend. Number four is that all high school subjects that you thought were a waste of time all of a sudden have new relevance in a glass of wine from history, geography, chemistry, topography, writing, all of it, it's there in the glass, how we communicate it, how we share about it, all of it is there. So if you thought a certain subject was not going to be involved in a glass of wine, beer or spirits, it's all there, so none of it was a waste of time. And my last one is that you're never gonna know it all. So embrace the lifelong journey. Know that it's going to layer on top of each other and don't be afraid of the times where I call it the snapback. Unfortunately, what can happen is you learn something new, which is exciting, but then you almost get like an elastic snap that says, wait a second, now there's a whole bunch of stuff I don't know. The new layer of information that I've added on top means that I don't understand this next part to embrace that as a wonderful part of the journey, not something to feel that is a deficiency. So don't worry about the snap back. You're going to move forward. Then you're going to realize you don't know stuff and you need to learn more. And this is how your lifelong learning journey in the wine, beer, and spirits world is going to work. I hope that I've inspired you. If you're thinking about the fall is coming up, taking some wine courses, definitely check out my courses I have available over at winegirlacademy.com. But there's lots of great instructors out there and know that the more instructors you have, every instructor may have a bit of a different style, but they're always going to have something that resonates with you. Everybody has a different way of explaining something. Well, we can't change the map of Burgundy, for example, how somebody presents it may make it a bit easier for you to understand. So using different instructors can also be a great way to expand your knowledge. I hope I have inspired you today to continue on with your wine education, maybe potentially consider formalizing it a little bit. It is a wonderful, incredible industry, and I would welcome you into it. Now, part of your wine journey 
is definitely knowing a bit more about your palette. And if you haven't had the opportunity yet to do my palette personality quiz, then I highly recommend you head on over to my website, winegirlacademy.com. Take the quick, fun, easy eight question quiz that I have here. And you're going to be broken down into one of three palette personalities that I have used with clients and customers. And that from that quiz, you're going to be identified as one of the three palette personalities. And then you're going to get a whole booklet about wine styles that are going to fit into the palette personality of wines you're enjoying now, words to use when you're shopping, and a bit more information about why you like the wines you do and some food pairing ideas. So that's all there for you over at winegirlacademy.com. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. New episodes come out every Tuesday. As always, thanks for spending time with me. Have a wonderful week. Cheers to you. Bye now.